We really like to see CMA as a big family. We do have alignment for our naturopaths to actually get nutrition assessment as well. So they can get private health rebates. We are aligned with the WHO as well. So that is especially during the COVID times. It has been supportive <laughs> yep. for um, naturopathy. They, WNF have put out some fantastic literature and information for members to share, which has been great for our members. We are also part of OneCam, which is a collaboration uh, with industry as well as association. Hello and welcome. Mentoring with Geraldine is a bite-sized practitioner podcast for naturopaths, nutritionists, herbalists, and practitioners. This podcast responds directly to your needs, the needs of the practicing natural therapist. With interviews, herbal discussions, something business, and something clinical each week, you'll get the variety you need and enjoy to stay motivated in practice. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Mentoring with Geraldine and the Bite Size Podcast. And today, I'm very lucky to have Christy Hollis with us, and she's from CMA. She's their president, no less, and she's a herbalist and naturopath and everything up in Darwin. And she's going to tell us a bit about herself and her practice, and then we're going to find out about CMA and the association itself, and perhaps why you'd be thinking about joining that over a different association. So, Christy, tell me about yourself. Hi Geraldine, been a naturopath and herbalist for the last eight years now. So I've been up, oh sorry, 18 years, 2002. <laughs> yeah, oh my oh. gosh. <laughs> I've been up in Darwin for the last 10 years in practice up here and I travel down to Catherine, which is 300 kilometres away, uh, once a month as well for clinic because wow. there's actually now no doctor even in town, let alone a naturopath. Oh. Wow. Yeah. A uh, new challenge. <laughs> yeah, totally a new challenge. Yeah. So, yeah, um, my business is Everlasting Health and uh, yeah, I've been up here for 10 years. Love working with hormone related issues for women in particular and a bit of a family orientated practice. Cool. That sounds really good. It's really good being up there. I love Catherine, actually. I've been there a couple of times and it's quite big not to even have a doctor. It's just literally closed down last month. I mean, it's actually quite a big town. It's not a little town. Yeah, and it services so many yeah. stations and everything as well. So it's really massive. disheartening to see, to be honest, yeah. That's a massive area. That's a real shock, actually, because it's not a small town. It's got, you know, big shopping centre and all the rest of it. It's got everything there. There's a lot of travellers going through. Yes. And so that's actually a real shock to the system that you're at. At this stage, yeah, I've been down there for the last five years working out of various places. So, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see what happens in the next few months, that's for sure. Yeah, totally. That's, mm. wow, that's a real shocker. So um, now tell us about CMA. Now, I've, CMA is the one I go and look for it. Someone says to me they're a nutritionist and, you know, what association should they join? And I say, oh, join CMA. And then they go, they go to Google it and then like, what is it called again? <laughs> Ah, yes, the old confusion between the two CMAs. Yes. <laughs> and they go, are you uh, sure this is it, Geraldine? I'm like, no, it's the other CMA. Yeah. About four years ago, they changed their names to Complementary, uh, what is it? Complementary Medicines Australia. Yeah. So yeah. we challenged them on the name, but uh, we couldn't really get them to change it, unfortunately. So we have links on our site and they have links on their site so people can... Right, Which, because you're the other complementary medicine association. Correct. So it's the association bit at the end that we're really interested in typing into that computer when you're looking for CMA. <laughs> yes, definitely, yes. Look, we've been around since 1985 and we actually cover basically ingestive uh, herbal medicine, Chinese herbal, Ayurvedic, uh, nutrition, as you said, naturopathy, homeopathy as well. Mm -hmm. and fluorescences right so it's all the ingestive so if you're an ingestive so because i've spoken of course to atms and i've spoken to nhaa and then you know nhaa is quite specific it's only really got the two and then atms of course covers all the body workers as well so cma is for the ingestives which is who i've been recommending right karen yeah. tell me more about it tell us more <laughs> about cma <laughs> Oh, look, do you, what do you want to know? Who, well, they, we want to know why. Patients? Why is CMA there? What was your, I mean, and what, uh, you know, why did you, why have we got so many associations? 
let's do that generally rather than just CMA. Why have we got so many associations? I guess there's people fear there's a net, not a something that covers them. So they've started up their various reasons for association. For us, we, like we said, we do include just those ingestives. We try to make sure that we have the higher education pathway as well. So we joined WNF about mm-hmm. four or five years ago now. And then we've also and formed with the NHAA to form part of the AIMF. Australian Naturopathic Federation as well. Yep. Right, so we've got the World Naturopathic Federation, we've got the Australian Naturopathic Federation, and you guys are part of that along with the NHAA. And what does that actually bring to the table? What significance does that have for a member? So we are working on, as I said, on the higher education standards. So we're making sure that they do have a biblical of bachelor or, or higher for any new graduates. The, we are aligned with the WHO as well. So that is especially during the COVID times. <laughs> it has been <laughs> supportive yep. for um, naturopathy. They, WNF have put out some fantastic literature and information for members to share, which has been great for our members. Mm-hmm. Right. So um, when we're looking at what an association does for its members, so uh, this isn't a question I've asked of either David or Christine. So how about, because, I mean, you're all, doing that you all help your members but in what way does an association help its members how do you help us out as an association what is it you're you know what are we getting from i mean i know i belong to three (laughs) (laughs) but for the listener what is it they're getting out of being part of an association like we, we really like to see cma as a big family very friendly office staff that actually are able to support you emotionally as well as the answer mm-hmm. those naturopathic uh, directions if we need to point you in a direction for our health funds. We do have alignment for our naturopaths to actually get nutrition assessment as well. So they can get private health rebates if they do that equivalency yeah. to get some private health rebates back under nutrition. Right, which is really good. So yeah, yeah, we all lost that. It was a bit of a shocker. And then, I mean, it looks like it's probably coming back as well because it was just one of those things, yeah. but it's all hard work on Possibly a bit associations. Delayed. Yeah, yeah, so. and that is right. We're in the background doing a lot of those things, making submissions to for the private health rebates, doing submissions for government, alongside part of ANC, Australian Naturopathic Council, we're doing joint submission for the private health as well as for, there was a latest one for preventative health program that we've put in submissions for as well. Yeah, We are also part of OneCam, which is a collaboration uh, with industry as well as associations. Right. And yeah, and that includes ATMS and those associations as well as NHAA. So yeah. 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 So what does OneCam do for us? So OneCam is about promoting the natural therapies as a whole, um, how the public uses them, putting out positive reinforcement messages about what we could be doing for our our health in general. And as I said, working alongside industries such as practitioner-only brands and things like that as well. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that is, it's, we do need that collaboration across all of the networks. And the more we collaborate, I feel the better off we all are, the more we know each other and the more we're supporting each other, the better the industry is as a whole. So um, the, how long did you say CMA had been in existence for? 1985. 85. So let's not count those years. Um, so <laughs> yeah, we yeah, yeah. I, yeah, I know exactly what I was doing when I was in 1985. Let's not go there. So <laughs> when did you, so in 1985, was it that it was all ingestives that were included or has that expanded over time and changed since 1985? It has changed. It was initially uh, naturopathy and not specifically as individual modalities as such. So, yeah. So you've really increased the board and increased where people, you know, all of the different modalities. So do you have, with the Chinese medicine, because of course they've all just gone through registration with APRA. So did you find that many of them left CMA or did they stay in CMA or go to APRA? What's happening if they come back? Yeah, there is a handful of Chinese herbal medicine practitioners specifically. Um, Mm -hmm. Some people like to have, you know, that both ways with their Chinese medicine herbal association plus APRA. Just like yourself, various yeah. associations. <laughs> and myself too, to be honest. <laughs> yeah. yeah, spread yourself around. I mean, some things aren't covered by some associations. So, you know, I have to be with a hypnosis, you know, association and I have to be with other associations. It does end up costing 
money at the end of the year when you're paying up for three, four associations. So Mm. it is worth making that choice right at the beginning. So for the new graduate, for example, what do you offer? I know that both ATMS and NHAA have a free first year, you know, that free student and then reduced fees for the first year. So But what do you send them? How do you help that new graduate? Uh, We actually, our students actually like NHAA get free student membership. Then they get 50% off for the first year. We also have a person on the board who specifically supports our students. Uh, We've offered over the years clinic for them to be able to graduate and get their clinic hours through as well. Mm -hmm. We've organised that, especially with the rollout of the advanced diploma level, that they actually could go and do some hours with some practitioners run by CMA. So that was when it was closing down two years ago? So, okay, I didn't ask you this prior, and you so you may not have thought about it. There are some now some advanced diplomas coming back on the shelf. How are these going to fit back in? Unfortunately, they won't come into CMA membership. Yeah, yep. we will only be accepting degrees. They need to, you know, we do have a criteria for education standards, they, which are currently being reviewed by lots of associations at the moment. Yep. But yeah, bachelor is degree is the minimum standard. So that's also the government minimum standard, isn't it? Or yes. is that? Because that's the RTO, that's the training standard. So Correct. it's not that you guys are making it up, that it's some associations are being a we're posh, like NHA are the same guessing they're not going to take the advanced diplomas either because they were phased out so um but with this now that they're coming back how are they if it's not rto i mean there's so many things there that just i don't know maybe we shouldn't go into it maybe it's actually too deep for this conversation but i mean there's a lot of things that they're going to end up struggling with yeah unfortunately i I agree i mean we're alongside with nhaa at the moment pushing for registration so with that along that side will be those requirements so it's a full-on one, I have to say. The, I just worry that the people who do it, they won't be covered by an association or even if they are in an association, will they be able to get insurance? What is the long-term, yeah. will they be able to upgrade from that? Will any, cause the old ones all have sort of an upgrade pathway because they have the each, when you finish your subject, it has a government number. And so the degree schools know what those HLT numbers mean and where they fit in and what they can give credit for before you do your upgrade. Whereas, of course, with these new ones, if they're not government accredited, they're not going to have those numbers, are they? No, I don't think so. I think it might be an interview for the education uh, department that you might want to ask. It might be. It might be because I completely brought this out of the blue. So you hadn't had time to think about this (laughs) because it just happened to come up in Facebook book um literally yesterday and it was just like oh yeah oh yeah there's all these other ones are coming back that had stopped and now they're bringing them back so how does that fit in so I did Mm. just throw this at you without any prior thought about this it was because I was looking at this Facebook page yeah how is that going to fit in how are we going to do that we've made these you know the if the government says no how do they fit in you know they might be okay for extra information if you're already out of association just want to do some um, learning extra learning yeah but uh, you know that's different I guess to yeah. pure qualification yeah if you're already in practice and you wanted to you know learn, learn more about herbs or something then it'd be a great way of doing yeah. that and getting some more skills under your belt if you're already up and running as a business yeah. and you have all those things behind you then that would be because they'd be certificated courses so that would be eligible sorry I'm trying to think about this in a roundabout way and I never should have brought it up <laughs> should have brought it up there's um, there is a lot in this but I think so I think actually in as part of this is if you're doing any form of education you need to check what yes. you get at the end of it what are you eligible for at the end of it is this a pathway that is going to especially if you're thinking I'm a bit too scared to do a degree I'm not really sure maybe I'll do a diploma first mm. and then fly in the diploma and you think wow that was amazing and I want to take it further I want to do a degree is there a degree pathway mm. what is the pathway so anyone who's doing a degree at the moment each university college whatever they are has a set number of points they're able to give so that that comes off your future degree like I know a lot yeah. of naturopaths and nutritionists who've done it and then they've discovered how much they enjoyed the teaching part they've stood in front of the class delivering and then they want to become teachers and that's totally normal part of you know our changes in our life and what we do and they become teachers and with that degree it means that they can then be funneled through to a teaching degree they have reduced hours they don't have to start right Mm. at the beginning Mm. and I think we sort of have to always think what is it that I'm doing 
Now, what is it I'm thinking of doing? But where will that take me? How will I get there? You know, do I have to take several trains to get to my ultimate destination? How many stops are there on on the line? Or is there one direct bullet train to get where I want to go? And those are some of the things that the people who are listening to this podcast who are new to practice or newer to practice, or even if they're just interested, hey, nice to have you here, then... (laughs) It is. And those who are listening are probably going, oh, yeah, I did not get a bullet train to where I am today. I definitely went via all of the country stations. I was definitely in Catherine for a bit. and Nobody was on the station platform. (laughs) (laughs) Because I certainly have been on that slow moving train with my education. When I look back and think about it now, I've been all over the place. So, yeah, I think maybe the learning from this is from this bit of conversation is where are you going? What is your end destination? We get a lot of inquiries at the CMA office about uh, from potential students who are looking mm. into courses and whether or not they're qualified. So that is a good way for people if they're looking at doing this is get, go to the straight to the associations and ask them, will they get covered for this? And even myself personally have had people ring me uh, mm. asking what they should do. And once we've had a little chat, they can realise what it is they really want out of the end of this and where they want to go and then make their own course. Yeah. And I have to say, I mean, like there are a couple of degree courses in Australia and they're online. They're even more online than they ever were before. And I lecture in one of them and I'm currently marking assignments and the support that these are first year assignments I'm marking and the support they're getting with those assignments and the support that's there means that actually, you know, anyone can do a degree. Don't be thinking I can't do a degree. Don't be thinking, oh, I have to do a diploma. You know, I'm not capable of doing a degree because everyone's getting the support to do everything. It's not like you're just somehow, you know, all of this stuff is thrown at you and you're told to build a wall. It's not. You're being coached along the way. You're being helped at every single stage and at every single point within the degree. So people shouldn't Mm -hmm. be thinking to themselves, oh, I can't do that. Oh, no, that'd be too much for me. Because, I mean, the average degree time is like eight years or something. So to get your degree, because we're all adult learners. So we're not the four, three, four year degree, which in itself says you can do this while you go through your life. Yep. So is there anything else you wanted to tell us about CMA before I present you with my trick question? Oh, look, um, I know that. (laughs) Yeah. Um, I guess a lot of people are concerned about what they need to provide for CMA for like their CPE points. We do have the 20. Yes. So the CMA requires you to do 20 CPE points annually. And also the other requirements are that we are actually um, making sure you've got your private, not private health, sorry, your insurance, indemnity insurance and all those things at the correct levels in that as well. First aid certificate if you're in practice and it's appropriate, working with children, those sort of things as well. Yeah. As a member, you will get free links to EBSCO, part of the research database. Oh, that's handy. That is yeah, great. very that handy. Is great Especially getting for EBSCO. student or yeah. even practitioner. Oh, yeah finding out the latest and greatest. Also NPOD, which is that comparison site for products, and that is also included for free. And as we said before, WNF, ANF membership is also taken into account. So, yeah, and those costs are involved. And as most of your listeners will probably understand, CMA board is made up of entirely of volunteers yep. so just like yourself in practice we're in practice running our own businesses but putting in a lot of voluntary hours gosh I would hate to think of how many hours I do weekly let alone annually yeah that's the thing isn't it there's a lot of volunteer hours in the associations and we all give to the associations and um, but we have to understand especially during times like this there isn't necessarily always someone in the office because there can't be that many people in an office <laughs> There's um, limits to the number of people who are allowed and all the rest of it. So um, it's really interesting, though. The association, the whole association thing is very interesting, but they support us as practitioners. We do need our associations, and I believe that we all need to be part of one, whichever one we choose, whichever we align with. I think it's a great idea to be part of an association. So I'm not going to speak to every single association because there are heaps of them. I have chosen my top three, and those are the ones that I share with people on a regular basis. And so Christy, thank you so much. Your trick question, though, and I did ask this of both David and Christine. Now, you're more of a herbalist. So the trick question is, what is your favourite herb? The eyes Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> there really are so many herbs. How can we choose but one? Yeah, totally. You know, but for me, juggling everything, all that I do, rhodiola is personally oh. my favourite. Yeah. You know, great adaptogen, support 
physical, mental energy, liver. Yeah, it's a total one now, and I love the radiola as well, which reminds me, um, I'm almost out. I need to put in an order. <laughs> <laughs> I include it in my herbal teas too. I've got it in my herbal teas. Yeah, that's a great place to put it because then you can just be drinking. It just helps, you know, that adaptogenic effect. You get that from the, you know, from the tea. It's, oh, it's a lovely way of having it. Absolutely delicious. Beautiful. Smells divine. Now, I don't think I've forgotten anything. I think we've covered all we intended to cover and a bit more. Sorry about that. Sorry about throwing in the latest Facebook post. But it's, it, I mean, it is really interesting. And I think the, the answer to that one is ask the associations. Is it, if I do this, what can I have at the end of it? How will that streamline into something else? And where will I go with this? Because today we think to ourselves, I want to heal the world, you know, one-on-one, or I want to heal the world in big groups. And then once you're actually doing it and you're in business, things change, things segue. Yeah. You know, you, you notice areas that, that are deficient in your education or in yourself, in the way you talk or behave or do or whatever. And so you learn that. And so you're always changing and segueing. So it's a good idea when we first start out to make sure that the education that we're getting is the best one. I mean, I did an advanced diploma, but that's all there was in South Australia when I did. I didn't have a choice. There was no such thing as a degree. And then, so of course, it's grandfather. I did a degree. I did an upgrade. So there was, and I knew when I started it, I'd have to do that pathway and upgrade with an online university because it was nobody else. And I think that people have to really look at that pathway and look at that future. How is this going to work for me into the future? What will people want to see from me? You know, Mm. so I think that's a really good point. And knowing that you can contact the associations and ask, do I do this one? Don't I do this one? Is this yeah yeah the the office is generally really helpful with that information so should be able to find the answers yeah totally able to find the answers so um right well i'd just like to say thank you so much christy for joining us today on um the bite size podcast and for listeners obviously don't forget to give us a review myself and christy a five star i feel go to itunes (laughs) it's not called itunes in a court it's called um what's it called apple podcast they renamed it so you go and find me and you scroll to the bottom and that's where you press five stars for Christy and I. Awesome. <laughs> Thank, you Thank you so you. much, Christy. See ya. Thank you. Bye. Thanks so much for joining me today. Don't forget to rate, review, and subscribe to the podcast for the weekly episodes. If you'd like even more support and learning, then the Academy is for you. Here you'll find part two of the herbal discussions, more clinical learning, and case studies to support your clients in practice. Bye for now.